Hi, and thank you for joining me to learn how to properly line your denture with Denture Fit. Now, before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to ensure that you understand exactly what Denture Fit is not. Denture Fit is not an adhesive. Quite frankly, it's better. So, what is Denture Fit? Well, Denture Fit is a soft silicone dental grade material used to line your denture to improve the fit and comfort of that denture. The liner will stay adhered to your denture until you remove the denture fit weeks or even months later. But remember, it's still important to remove your denture nightly to clean it and give your mouth a chance to breathe. Okay, now how does denture fit work? Well, in order to understand that, we first need to understand how a denture works and why it gets loose. Dentures stay in place through suction. A perfect fitting denture fits snugly into the roof of your mouth and in the gum line area without any gaps. Now, dentures will get loose when your gums shrink, leaving voids in the gum line area, also known as the trough. So as the denture fit fills the voids in your trough and makes a new detailed impression of your roof and gum, filling all the nooks and crannies in the trough of your denture, well, when all those voids are filled in your gum line, your denture can then stay supported in your suction spot. So, knowing that, how will denture fit work for you? Well, number one, you'll have a much improved fit. Number two, there will be a soft cushioning against your hard dentures. Number three, you'll have relief from denture soreness. Number four, you will reduce or eliminate the need for that yucky adhesive. So, if you have an ill-fitting denture that has no suction now, Denture Fit will improve the stability and comfort of your denture. All right, guys, let's talk expectations. Realistically, some denture situations will get a better result with denture fit than others. This all depends on the starting fit of the denture and the shape of the palate and gums. Well-made dentures that are not far from a perfect fit can expect to get a great result from denture fit. Conversely, poorly made dentures that never fit right to begin with and that are far away from a good starting fit can expect a much improved fit. So denture fit requires accurate application. It requires learning and sometimes even trial and error. But don't worry. Once you learn how to use it, you've got that learning for life. Plus, you have an excellent support team at denture fit who want you to get the best possible fit and they will help you out. Now that you have a better understanding of denture fit and what denture fit can do for you, let's go over the contents of our kit. But before we do, please understand that one kit is designed for the reline of one denture plate. So if you have uppers and lowers, you may need two kits. So without further ado, what's in the kit? We have two applicators of the Denture Fit Soft Silicone that will fill the voids in your denture. We have our primer that will allow that silicone to stick to your denture. We have two swabs and our handy dandy instruction guide. Before we get started with the actual reline of our denture, let's go over the anatomy of this particular denture. We have here the palate. The palate is the area that seats in the roof of your mouth. Then we have the trough, that is where your gum line sits. We have the back edge of the denture and we have the ridge. The last part would be called the wall, which connects the ridge to the trough. Now the key to getting your best fit on your upper denture is to accurately seat that denture into your suction spot when you reline it. Now why is this critical? It's critical because your gums are always changing, but your palate, that never changes. Your palate will always be your starting reference point during your reline. Because when your voids are filled while your denture is supported in your suction spot, it stays in your suction spot. So where is this magical suction spot? 
Well, it's located directly behind your front teeth at the highest, most curved point in your mouth. Watch how I firmly press my denture into my suction spot and then press slightly forward. Now you practice. So take your thumb and put it behind where your front teeth would be in the roof of your mouth. Press up towards the bridge of your nose while pressing slightly forward. Don't forget to crook your index finger over the bridge of your nose to help hold it firmly in place. It's time to talk about cleaning, rinsing, and drying your denture. But before we do, let's talk about a few extra items we suggest that you have on hand before doing it. Number one, some dish soap without moisturizer. Number two, cotton Q-tip. Number three, a cotton round. Number four, isopropyl or rubbing alcohol. Number five, a soft bristled toothbrush. Number six, scissors, and last but not least, number seven, your timer. We're now going to talk about cleaning, rinsing, and drying your denture. It is important to thoroughly clean your denture so that there is no residue from adhesives or anything else on that denture. Because any foreign substance on the surface of your denture will prevent proper adhesion and will cause lifting of the silicone shortening the life of your liner. Now, dish soap is the best way to clean your denture in preparation for your reline. Scrub your denture with dish soap and your soft bristled toothbrush rinse, then dry. To further ensure that there is no residue left on your denture, you can wipe the inside down with rubbing alcohol. Avoid touching the edges or inside of your denture with your fingers. Oils from your fingers will prevent proper adhesion of the silicone. And last but not least, make sure your denture is crispy dry before applying the primer. It is now time to apply the primer. The primer has an organic tacky substance in it that makes the silicone stick to your denture. It is only necessary to prime on top of your hard acrylic denture or over a soft reline from your dentist. It is never necessary to prime on top of existing denture fit silicon. So here we go. Let us first quickly dip our swab into the primer, leaning it on our denture, and making sure to cap that bottle of primer immediately to avoid evaporation. Now, it's a good idea to start with the edges first, while your swab is most saturated, to prevent the silicone from lifting later. You can then move on to the top of the wall, the trough, the palate, slightly over the front ridge. Remember, don't miss any spots. Then set your timer and let it dry for two minutes. So now it's time to apply the silicone. I'm going to first explain how we are going to apply the silicone and then we will do it together. But before we do, let's talk about the correct way to activate the silicone because it's important. Hold the barrel of the applicator firmly in one hand, and with the other hand, you will tighten or twist the clear wing tabs in the direction of the black arrow until you hear and feel it snap into place. That black arrow on the label tells you which way to turn the clear applicator tip. It is very important to twist the clear applicator tip in the direction indicated and not the applicator body. If you do, silicone will squish out the sides and your denture fit is now useless. So now, first listen while I talk you through the process. You will apply first three lines to the palate of your denture, then the rest of the applicator you will empty into the trough. You will work quickly. Focus on getting the silicone on the denture quickly and then into your mouth fast. The silicone does not need to be neat or pretty on your dentures. It is most important to get it on there and get it into your mouth quickly. You do not want the silicone to start setting up outside of your mouth or it will not spread evenly on your palate, resulting 
and a poor fit. Now, let me prep my denture so that we can do this together. First, activate the silicone applicator. Again, twist the clear wing tabs in the direction of the black arrow until you hear and feel it snap into place. Now, press the plunger and watch it come through the mixing tip. This can take a few seconds to get it started flowing through. Start with a thicker line down the center of the palette. Next, put a medium line on the left, then put another medium line on the right. Now, put the remainder in the trough, starting at one end and go all the way around to the other end, back and forth until it's all gone. See how fast I'm working? Now, get it up in your mouth. Is your denture snug in your suction spot? Make sure it is. Press up towards the bridge of your nose and then slightly forward. Whatever you do, do not push your denture back towards your throat. You will have a tendency to want to push your denture backwards. Fight that urge. Do not push back. You will not get a good fit. Remember, always press up and forward. Hook your index finger over the bridge of your nose and hold firmly. Set your timer for four minutes and hold your denture still. Do not remove your denture from your mouth during the four minutes. Time to press pause. I'll see you when your four minutes are up. Now let's assess our fit. With your denture still in your mouth, try to feel if it is snug. Take your denture out of your mouth and pay attention if you have any suction. If your denture is snug, congratulations, you are done. It is best to leave your denture out of your mouth for the next two hours while the silicone finishes curing. If you are not snug, don't worry, you are normal. Most people with medium looseness require two applicators of silicone to get snug. So, if that is you, let's move on to the snug up application. If you don't have good suction yet or have space to fill in the gum line, you may need a second application of silicone. Look at the front of your denture. Did silicone come up and over the front ridge all the way around? Look at the back. Do you have flashing hanging off the back edge of your palette all the way across? If you do not see this and are not snug, you need a second applicator of silicone. Let's proceed to the snug up application. Use these instructions to snug your dentures up after your initial application of denture fit right now, or if your denture gets loose in the future. If you are applying denture fit over a soft reline from your dentist, you will use these snug up instructions for your initial application. If you are doing the snug up application immediately following your initial application, just make sure your denture is perfectly dry. Any moisture on your denture will prevent proper adhesion. A hair dryer comes in handy right about now. If you are doing this snug up at a later date, you'll need to clean your denture just as you did for your initial application. Wash with dish soap, rinse and dry, wipe the interior with rubbing alcohol. Use your cotton q-tip to prime any bare spots on the ridge or along the back edge. Also, apply primer slightly over the front of the ridge. The reason for the q-tip is because you need very little primer and the foam swab in your kit will use more primer than you need. Do not cover existing denture fit silicone with primer. If you are applying over a soft liner from your dentist, prime over the soft liner just to make sure it sticks. Apply to the ridge, wall, trough, and one quarter of the way up the palate. Let the primer dry for two minutes. 
Now let's learn where you will apply the silicone for the snug up. First, I will explain to you where we are going to apply it, then we will do it together. First, if there are any bare spots along the back edge, apply a skinny line of silicone on the bare spots. Remember, you will need to work quickly because the skinnier the lines, the faster the silicone will set up. Then put all of the remaining silicone in the middle of the wall. You will not put any silicone on the palette. Never apply more silicone to the palette after the first application. If you apply too much silicone to your palette, you will overbuild it and will cause the denture to drop too low in your mouth. This will ruin your fit. If you are applying over a soft reline from your dentist, you will not apply silicone to the palate either. So, let's recap. We will only apply silicone to the back edge, if it needs it, and to the middle of the wall. Now, let's apply the silicone together. Activate the silicone applicator. Twist the clear wing tabs in the direction of the black arrow until you hear and feel it snap into place. Now, press the plunger and watch it come through the mixing tip. This can take a few seconds to get started flowing through. First, if you have any bare spots on the back edge, apply silicone there. Next, apply the remaining silicone to the middle of the wall all the way around. Seat your denture into your suction spot. Hold with your thumb, hook your index finger over the bridge of your nose, and then press your denture slightly forward. Do not push the denture back towards your throat. Press up and forward. Set your timer and hold firmly for four minutes. Assess your fit. If it is snug, you are done. If it is not snug, you will need to repeat the snug up application with an additional application of silicone. Now let's talk about how and when to trim excess silicone from your denture. If you have a great fit, but feel like you need to trim excess silicone hanging around the edges of your denture, by the way, we call this flashing, you may trim it, but keep in mind that over trimming can break your seal. Think of the silicone on the edges of your dentures like a snorkeling mask. Any breaks in your seal will allow air or liquids in. So ideally, you want complete, even flashing around the edges of your dentures. So when should you trim? Well, you should trim if the silicone is loose, hanging, or uncomfortable, or if you can see it when you smile. Do not trim flashing if it feels comfortable. This contributes to a good seal. So how do we trim? Only trim on the front of your denture above the teeth. Never trim directly on top of the ridge or you will break the seal. It is desirable to have a small amount of flashing on the back edge of the palate. If it is not bothering you, leave it alone. If it is uncomfortable, go ahead and trim, but leave a small amount of flashing coming off the back edge. Hold your scissors at a 45 degree angle, angled away from the palate. This keeps the silicone against the roof of your mouth, maintaining your seal. 